Hi everyone, my name is Josh, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about the Graco Merca Air Assisted Airless Units. First of all, I'd like to give a massive thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel. It's really great to see that the videos that we're putting out there are useful to you guys. And if you haven't yet, then please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new videos. Later on in the video, I'll be giving you a demonstration on how these units work. But first of all, we'll do a little bit of theory so we understand exactly what they are. So this is a air operated Graco Merca with a 45 to 1 ratio. So what that ratio means is for every one PSI of air pressure we put in, we get 45 PSI of fluid pressure. So this pump has a maximum pressure of 4,500 PSI. So that's if we put in 100 PSI of air pressure. So this is our most popular model, but we can supply and tailor the best unit for you and your application. So if you aren't 100% sure on which one to go for, just give us a call and we can happily advise. I'll give you a quick run through the key components of the unit so we understand a little bit better what it is we're looking at. So we've got the suction filter here attached to the suction tube and hose, which is then connected directly to our pump. So the pump then uses the suction tube like a straw to draw in material into the pump itself. The pump then builds the pressure and pushes the uh, material through the main filter housing here, then out through this fitting down the hose to our gun. Next up here on the control panel itself, we've got our mains air into the pump and our on off ball valve. Then on the right hand side, we have our pump pressure and on the left hand side, we have our atomizing air, each with their own gauges showing the pressure. Right, so what is air assisted airless? Very simply put, it's basically the exact same concept as your normal airless unit, so like your GX21s or 390s, but with an additional airline which helps atomize your material a little bit further. With this Graco Merca package, you get everything you need to start spraying. All you need to do is connect up your air. So you get seven and a half meter fluid and air hose, G40 gun, bottle of TSL, instruction manuals and a spanner, and also a spray tip of your choice and all the filters to suit that spray tip. When you buy a Graco Merca unit from us, you're gonna get a G40 gun like this one. So this is a really nicely designed gun and is 20% lighter than other guns at around the same price point and the trigger pull force is up to 40% less than the closest competitor which is really going to help reduce the operator's fatigue and most importantly the finish you get with this gun is excellent. With the G40 gun you'll notice that we have connections on the bottom of the gun here to connect up two hoses. So at the front of the gun here we have our fluid connection so this is where our paint line would go and we also have a built-in filter housing here which takes these little gun filters which is basically our last line of defense before tip blockages and then we've also got a little swivel here so you can move the gun around freely. Next towards the back of the gun we have our second connection which is our air input so this is used to atomize our paint or material a little bit further and ultimately give us a better flatter finish. Another reason to go air assisted airless is it allows you to spray the same materials at a slightly lower pressure which then creates less overspray and paint wastage. Let's imagine for a second we're using an airless unit instead of air assisted. So the only way we can atomize our paint is by putting it under pressure. So let's say we need 2000 PSI of pressure to atomize our paint fully and to get rid of the towers in our fan pattern. Now with air assisted we'll be be able to bring that number down. So let's say we get an acceptable finish in the center of our fan pattern at about 1600 PSI, but we're still getting those same tails. So what we'd have to do with airless is keep cranking up that pressure till they go. But what we can do with air assisted is bring in a little bit of atomizing air and that should get rid of those tails for us. This allows us to spray at a lower pressure, which in turn reduces overspray and therefore less paint wastage and mess. Uh, but it also has a knock-on effect of less wear and tear on the pump, gun and spray tip, so it's going to cost you a lot less to run compared to your standard airless unit. A great feature of the G40 gun is this fan control we have on the back here. So what that allows us to do is adjust the size of our fan pattern slightly while we're spraying on the go. So rather than switching out tips, we can just adjust the knob here and increase and decrease the size of our pattern. For example, if we had something like a 310 or a 410 spray tip, we could have this closed right down so that the fan pattern is determined by our spray tip, so it's nice and wide for when we're spraying something like doors. Then we could increase the airflow, which is gonna make our pattern slightly narrower um, for when we're doing something like window frames. What I would say is though, this isn't like an air spray gun where you can adjust all the way from a spot to say like a 12 inch fan pattern, but it can be useful and will typically reduce the pattern by around two inches. And lastly, before we get into the spray booth and see this thing in action, I just wanted to explain quickly the spray tips themselves. So a standard with this kind of unit, you would have a flat spray tip, but there is a kit available for the gun which allows you to switch to your reversible tips. But normally with a G40 gun, we would always recommend flat tips over the reversible. 
and for me this is mainly because the spitting you get with the reversible tips and that's because the shutoff point for the gun is actually spaced slightly further away when you're using the reversible tips compared to flat tips. Also with the reversible you don't have that fan adjust control on the back of the gun. The tips themselves are really easy to fit so all we have to do is undo the guard from the front of the gun, get our spray tip, making sure that the seal is still in place in the back there, then put the tip in, making sure that the alignment point is located in the little slot there. Click that in, guard back onto the front of the gun, and you're done. It's also worth mentioning that when you take your tip out to change a size or clean it, be careful not to lose that seal as you won't be spraying anything without it and your gun will definitely leak. So that's the boring technical bit out of the way. Now let's head over to the spray booth and see this thing in action. Right, so welcome to the spray booth. So I've got exactly the same machine set up here, albeit slightly more used. So 45 to 1 Graco Merca Air Assisted Airless. Only difference I've got is an uh, optional dump tube that we supply on it. So all that does is allows us to recirculate the paint a little bit easier back into the bucket. So now I'm gonna show you exactly what it does and how we set it up. Okay, so we wanna start spraying. So the first thing we need to do is load up our unit with paint so the system is all primed and ready to go. So first thing we wanna do is connect up our airline. And then before we turn the ball valve to let the air go through to the pump, we need to make sure that both regulators are all the way anti-clockwise so they're not going to sort of make the pump jump into life. So they are all the way off. Open this ball valve. Then the pump is now ready to start going once we adjust this uh, regulator here. So we've got our ball valve down here open so that the paint can circulate through and come out of uh, this tube into our bucket. Once it's done that and is coming out evenly and smoothly, then we know that our pump is primed and we're ready to send it down the paint hose. So if we do that now. Nice and smoothly. So we know that our pump is now primed and we can shut that ball valve just there. And we know that our pump is now primed and ready to go and send it down our paint hose. So if we get our gun down here. Now that our system is primed, we need to get it pumping through our hoses. So if we had any material left in it from whenever we were spraying last time, maybe a bit of leftover paint or some water, we need to make sure we've got that flush through. So easiest way to do that, take your guard off and get yourself a waste bucket here. Squirt it in. So that's coming through nice and smoothly now so that we know that our hoses are full of this new product. Now we just put the guard back on, making sure that our tip seal is still in place. Just put it back on. And now we're ready to start spraying and set our pressures. Okay, so now we're full up with paint and ready to spray, we can start setting our pressures. So at the moment I've got no pressure at all on the atomizing air and 30 psi on the air to the pump. So with our 45 to 1 ratio that gives us a spray and pressure of around 1350 psi. So we'll see what we get on with that. I'm expecting to see some tails but then we'll bring in the atomizing air to get rid of those. Okay, so as you can see, we're getting some pretty heavy tail lines there. So obviously not acceptable for our fine finished joinery work. What we're gonna do with our air assisted airless gun is increase the atomizing air to try and get rid of those. What you would have to do with an airless unit is increase the fluid pressure and that would eventually get rid of those, but at a much higher pressure. So we're gonna end up more wear and tear on the pump, more wear and tear on the gun, more paint wastage, more overspray. So let's bring a bit of air in now and see what we can do. Okay, so I've now added 20 psi of atomizing air with our 30 psi of fluid pressure. So let's see if that makes a difference. As you can see, that's much better already. So we've got no tails at all, much better finish. And when we overlay it, we're getting a nice blend here. We're not seeing any obvious marks like we are gonna see with our tails. Next, I wanted to show you what kind of pressure we would need if we didn't have the air assisted airless so you can see the difference. So we've got the exact same scenario. I'm just gonna keep increasing the pressure till we get an acceptable finish with no tails, but with no atomizing air. So we'll start again at 30 PSI and work our way up from there. So really heavy, heavy tails as before. So we'll increase to 35 PSI. Okay, so 35 PSI, which equates to just under 1600 PSI with our 45 to one ratio. So still getting pretty obvious tails there. So increase to 40 PSI. So 40 PSI now with our 45 to one ratio is now 1800 PSI. Still 
still getting fairly obvious tails that you can see, but they are going. So I think 45 PSI. So this is now at 45 PSI, which is just over 2000 PSI. It's a lot better, but I can still see tails in there. So even at 2000 PSI, it's still not cleared up. So now at 50 PSI, which is 2250 PSI at the gun. Okay, so that's about the same as we were with, with the air assisted. So we're at 50 PSI, where we were able to be at 30 PSI with air assisted with only 20 PSI of atomizing air. So a lot less overspray, a lot less paint coming out and a lot less paint wastage to achieve the same finish. Now we found our settings that are right for this scenario. So Technos Aquatop paint, 411 spray tip. We're using 30 PSI on the pump side at a 45 to one ratio and 20 PSI on the atomizing air. Now we can sort of see what the adjustable fan control does. So I'll have it um, all the way shut. So this is just gonna be our maximum width determined by the spray tip. Then we'll close it down and you can see what we can get down to um, just by introducing air at the front. Now I'll reduce it down. So as you can see there, quite a sizable difference. So as I said earlier, it takes about two inches off the fan pattern if you reduce it all the way close to all the way open, but it does use slightly more air. Okay, so now we're all set up. I'll show you how quick and well we can spray something. Easy as that. To be honest with you, most of our customers who use this sort of pump wouldn't clean it out every day. If you're using it last thing on a Monday, realistically, it's gonna be okay to use first thing on the Tuesday, but I'll give you a quick run through so we know how to flush it out. Just a, a sort of basic demo. So we've still got everything loaded up with paint. It's still under pressure. So first thing we wanna do, take our guard off, because no point atomizing the paint that's coming out. And then we wanna turn off our atomizing air. We aren't gonna need that anymore. Then we'll turn down our pump pressure, just so we know we're gonna be safe, but we've still got a load of pressure in here, so we need to be careful with that. So what we can do is dump the pressure back into our paint drum, and what you can also do is recycle a fair amount of the paint. You can get most of what you've got in these hoses back into your paint tin so you're not wasting it. So we'll just run through that quick. So just dump in the pressure first. So that's the pressure gone. So now we wanna take our suction tube out so that we're not sucking up any more paint. And we'll put that into our clean drum of water. Now we can start our pump again and get as much of this paint out as we can. So if we turn our pump up whilst holding the trigger, it comes out a little bit easier. Don't need loads of pressure, just enough to get it to come through. So that's it coming through nicely now. And then what you'll hear and what you're looking out for is a little spit which tells you that you're um, running out of paint and the air is starting to come through. Okay, so that's water starting to come through now. So we've flushed all the paint out of there. So now we can get a little bit more out of our return tube, open that up. And now that's water coming through. So now we can take our return tube and put that into our clean water bucket. Now we'll recirculate that round. So we're priming the system with water now and flushing out any leftover paint. So I'm just using the return tube now to uh, clean off the worst of the paint off the filter. Now that's primed and ready to go, we can now um, get the water going through our hoses so we can make sure they're nice and clean. So 
So what you'll notice is once you've done that once, the water in your bucket is going to still be pretty painty. So you're going to want to do that a couple of times if you really want to give it a thorough flush, flush out or if you're changing from a dark color to a light color. Not so important if you're going the other way around, but you want to make sure it's as clean as possible. Once we've gone through a couple of buckets of water to get the pump as clean as it possibly can be for next time, we want to make sure that our filters are clean so we don't have any paint drying on it while we're not using them. So best way to do that is remove all the pressure from the system. So turn our regulator down, shut the ball valve, remove the air so you know that the pump isn't going to build any more pressure. Now to relieve the pressure, we make sure that this ball valve is pointing down. So any pressure there is in the pump is coming out that tube. And just to double check, pull the trigger on your gun. Then you're ready to move the filter from the manifold and the filter from the bottom of the gun just to make sure they're as clean as they can be. I have made another video on how to clean out your pump more thoroughly. It is on a slightly different machine, but the basic concept is the same. So I'll put a link at the end of this video to that one so you can check it out if you wanted to. As you've seen, the Merca units are air operated, so be sure to check the rating of your compressor. Typically, you're gonna need around 10 to 15 CFM of free air delivery to run the unit and the gun. Uh, then another five CFM if you wanted to run the fan control on the back of the gun. We also supply compressors, so if yours isn't up to the job or you aren't sure, just give us a call. Well, I hope this video has been useful and I'll put links in the description below to all the products we've discussed. So if you wanted to find out more, you can check them out. If you've liked the video and found it helpful, then please hit the thumbs up icon. And if you wanted to find out more and get access to exclusive offers, then please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get a little notification when we upload a new video. That way you aren't gonna miss out on any new offers or content. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.